Okay, here we go again with another of Cuba and the cigars of Cuba. And just some things that, uh, you know, I found interesting that you might find helpful, interesting, or just enjoy a cigar with me. So, um, uh, we got a little bit of puppy action here. Here's Daisy. And uh, we got the Greyhounds in there. And... Uh, we don't know where the little chocolate lab went, but anyway, uh, a boot check. So these are J.B. Hill Cayman Crocodile Tail. Uh, just a great boot, uh, springtime boot, kind of matches on that uh, leather there. And then uh, this watch. A friend of mine uh, sold this to me, and uh, just a fantastic watch. Look at this. Hublot, and those are cigar leaves on there. And uh, so this is the uh, Opus X Hublot. And you can see the alligator band. And I know this is a cigar video, but I got to show you. I got to show you the, uh, the underside of this, if you can see it. Look at that in there. That's uh, uh, Carlos Fuente or Arturo Fuente, one of them. But anyway, it's just a cool watch. So anyway, on to cigars. Um, let's look in the humidor, the Euro Cave. You know, I've talked about this before. If you want a, you want a, a great humidor, the best humidor I think you can buy for home, uh, see if you can find a Euro Cave. Um, might be able to find one Facebook Marketplace or eBay. So, taking a look at the Cubans, the Cuban collection here. Now, I thought there was something interesting when I looked at, say, these two punch cigars here. Those are supposed to be the same cigars, but they're different you can see the length is different. Let me pull it out. Let's look at the shades of these Partagas D number four. All right, there's your number four. Um, the shades are kind of different. All right? And um, then ironically, I was pulling, I picked up this open, uh, open master Monte Cristo at the airport in Havana. And it's basically the same size as the Partagas number four. Now, I know, and I've been through the factories, and they make all the different brands in the same factory. Uh, different factories, of course, uh, but that they, you know, they've got some different factories in Cuba, but most of the factories there, you'll see all Cuban brands being made. So you'll see oil, you'll see Monte Cristo, you'll see Partagas, see Bolivar, Punch, see Cristobal, uh, Monte Cristo, Upman, even Cohiba. Now, the Cohiba factory is the only factory, I believe, that makes the Bahique. But you can find Cohibas in the the, uh, the factory with all the other cigars. And so they just kind of, they have a certain blend. And that blend becomes that, that brand. So the interesting thing about this punch, I'm going to pull it back here. Again, to make it out front. Uh, this is the same cigar. I got this at the airport. Um, no, you know what? Maybe I didn't. I take that back. This is a friend of mine. My uh, tour guide got me these. But uh, there, I guess it looks like about the same size. I, I guess it looked uh, just looks a little bit different. But certainly the shade is very different. So I have a theory about that. And while I talk about that theory, let's light up a cigar and we'll do a review. So, 
I don't know. I haven't reviewed this poor Loranga. I've got this Bolivar here that looks great. Oh, the Bolivar I got from the airport. Poor Loranga I got from my tour guide. Uh, this Upman. Now this Upman ranked very high in uh, Cigar Aficionado. And so maybe we'll try that one. So in the uh, Aficionado... Let me see if I can find it. Well, I did have a copy of Aficionado. It was sitting right here, but uh, I shouldn't be chauvinistic. But women, they love to move shit. And this is a cigar room, but I don't know. I don't know where it's at. But anyway, the Upman, uh, this is Magnum 46. Nice looking cigar. Got a medium shade of brown wrapper. Um, let's see if we can get the. Uh, there we go. So, very well packed, even. I think that's just the camera angle. It's got a little more darkness on the inside there. But So, let's try this one because it was highly ranked. Um, again, taking a look. Here, even these Romeos look slightly off. Uh, the shades are quite a bit different. Uh, you see this oil de Monterey, the bottom one, and the next one, the shade is different. So, why are there consistency issues with Cuban cigars? And I have a theory. It's based on some fact. Uh, my own... And so, let's sit down and talk about it. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to fire up this Upman Magnum 46. And give you a little review. I got this at the airport in Havana. And it's got a nice, nice salty flavor. Free light and uh, pretty decent draw. Nice veiny, uh, very consistent wrapper though. The veins are not really that lifted on it. Tightly rolled, it looks like. Uh, a little difficult draw pre light. So let's get this fired up. So I've learned to take my time when lighting a cigar. Uh, the Cuban lighting experience, you can see my video on that. <laughs> that was really interesting, but you know, cigars are meant to be patiently enjoyed. So I like a a good light. I think even somebody on one of my comments made a comment about how I didn't fully light a cigar before. And sometimes that's true. So, evenly burning there before I even draw. So, it's lit, but... The draw was a little tight, tighter than I'd like it to be. Maybe it'll open up. Um, the smoke is less thick than the uh, recent Cohiba I reviewed. Flavor, different flavor than, than the Cohiba. Maybe it was stronger at a very, uh, you know, there, there's, it's a unique flavor for sure. Um, the Cohiba and this one, the Upman has a, has a different flavor profile, subtle. It's 
some creaminess. It's a rough draw, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit it with the uh, triple torch here. So, good, good notes of wood, with coffee, creaminess. But to draw is a problem. You know, uh, this, if, if this is the one aficionado reviewed, it, it would not score that high it's just simply because it's a draw. Now, some of you have one of those pokers you can poke in. I, I don't have one of those. I kind of wish I did, but anyway, hopefully it'll it'll uh, free up a little bit as, as I get Get into it because it's kind of distracting from the flavor. You don't want to have to exert a ton of effort when you're uh, smoking a cigar, that's for sure. So this kind of leads me to the uh, inconsistencies of, of Cuban cigars and why I think that is. Now it's not that they don't have quality controls. They do. I've been in the factory several times. You can tell that there's a lot of quality control. There's a lot of supervisors there. Obviously, it's been generations of cigar rollers that have been rolling. People seem very dedicated to the work. Um, very few people in Cuba get paid well, but all things being equal, cigar rollers actually are on the upper end of it, from my understanding. But that feeds into why there are some uh, inconsistencies. Why? Because most cigar rollers, uh, from my understanding, and talking to several of my friends in Cuba, they get an allotment of cigars to take home at the end of the week. Um, and, you know, a regular Cuban salary is just pathetically low, uh, 30, 20, $30 a month. But if they take those cigars and they sell them on the black market, they can make well beyond what their normal monthly salary is. And they need to, they need to, to do that to, uh, to survive. So, what happens is, in Cuba, there's just a big black market for everything. And, are you really getting what you think you're getting? Now, interestingly, so I get a lot of my cigars from, from my guides. They get them from the factories. Cuban cigar prices are extremely expensive now and so it's much better economically to get them from a guide you can get them five to ten dollars a stick usually whereas now the Cuban cigars are well above that and I've had very good cigars so I, I'm not I'm not uh, you know if the quality wasn't there I wouldn't do that but I've also gone into the official cigar shop for Casa del Habanos and like the airport in Havana and bought these cigars and the interesting thing is I've noticed if you don't get a sealed box you might be getting I don't know if I'd call it a second but you might be getting something that somebody rolled in the factory maybe got some of the bands and put the bands on it maybe didn't cross the whole quality control line in Cuba, uh, in the factory, because they these are black market cigars. And I've even seen in La Casa del Habanos that they want to sell you cigars. They'll give you a deal on cigars, but they don't have capitalism, so they're not making anything unless this is their side cigars. 
So they'll give you a deal on cigars that are already in an open box. They will not deal on a box that's sealed because that box has been counted and it's coming from the factory. So you may get more consistencies with those, but I think just because the black market is so big, so big inside of Cuba, that you may not be getting, even at the airport, even on the cost of Delta Bonos, what either is appropriately labeled or maybe didn't pass all the quality control measures of those that are in the sealed box. No, no, what? Cuban cigars are awesome. So, even considering that, I don't have any problem with them. But I think that explains some of the inconsistencies. So, this uh, Upman Magnum 46, drawn a little bit better. But not great. Flavor is good, it's mellowed out. I'm waiting for a little more strength. Uh, does have that saltiness to it. So overall, good cigar, but bad draw. Getting better. So I think what I'll do is is uh, pause the video here, come back in a little bit as I'm maybe halfway through, and let you know if the draw got better, if the flavor profile changed. Okay. So let me pause it. Well, I'm further along on the uh, Upman, but I did find the culprit to the cigar aficionado, and it wasn't Lisa, it was this guy. And apparently, yes, Mr. Guilty Watson, what'd you do to my cigar aficionado? Well, apparently he chewed it to pieces. We got Eliza joining us and Daisy to wrap up. So, essentially, the uh, the Yupman just it got a little bit better, but not great. So you can see it still takes some effort. The flavor profile is is really good, um, but the draw is. A drawback so uh, certainly very appropriate for a, a video on the inconsistencies of Cuban cigars all right so next time see you